Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Arnold and this is Kisembo Academy. Okay, today we are going to look at examination style, past paper questions on, you know, functions, relations and mappings. So without any further ado, let's get to it. We have a number here. Given that f of x is equal to, you know, 4x minus 3, find this O. So we have a function here, f of x is 4x minus 3. Roman 1, find f of 2. When they say that find f, the function where 2 is the value of x, it, mean, it means that the, now in the place of x up here, it is 2 that has taken that place. So it, if we have 2 here, it means it's as, as good as substituting 2 there. So f of 2 means it's going to be 4 times the value of x has now become 2 minus 3. And so that's going to be 4 times 2, which is 8 minus 3, and that is 5. That's Roman 1 answered. Uh -huh. They're talking about Roman 2. Let's put it here. Roman 2, they want us to find f to the, uh, the inverse of that function of x. So now when we are finding the inverse, this is what we do when we're finding the inverse. So well, first of all, um, our function is f of x is equal to 4x minus 3. What we do is that let's just call f this f of x y. y is equal to 4x minus 3. So what we do is that we make x the subject of this formula. So that means it's going to become y, you know, when this 3 comes this way, it becomes plus 3 is equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 4, by 4. And when we divide both sides by 4, we end up with this going with that. You end up with x being y plus 3. Divide that by 4. So if I may rearrange this. Um, so x, you know, um, x is equal to y plus 3. 3 over 4. Now that we have, you remember uh, previously, it was y that was on its own side. It was y the subject of the formula. When they say find the inverse, it's more like they're asking you to find the reverse of the function. And as far as this function is concerned, at first it was y that was on its own side, or call it f of x. Now you have reversed the condition of this value of x. This x was in the general population and y was on its own side. Now, at the end of the day, you have made x be on its own side and the rest on its in the general population. It means that you have found the inverse of the function. You have flipped the function. You have, in, you, you have turned it the other way around. And so when you reach that condition, you'll simply come and put your value of x back here and you like so uh the back here this becomes so meaning the inverse of x where x is flipped it's going to become x plus three over four that's just how you do it that uh, you know in the place of y put back the x to show that that is how it is when it is flipped that's the inverse that's how we do it and so that's the inverse that's roman two let's get to roman three so they want f the inverse f, this is Roman 3, they want that. I mean, when this, when the value of x is 1. So from here, it's just a matter of quoting that. It means it's, uh, first of all, we know that the inverse of x is given by x plus 3 over 4. So when it is f, uh, the inverse of x, where the value of x is 1 is going to be given 1 by 1, plus 3 over 4. 3 plus 1 is 4, so it is 4 over 4, and this is 1. That is Roman 3 answered. Let's look at part B of the question. Let me just drop this off to create space for part B of the question, so that we write it down here. So part B of the question is as thus. Given that g of x is that and h of x is that, find the value of x for which g that da 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 da. So, okay, I like to write some of these things here. We have uh, the function g is x squared plus 1. 
the function h is given by x minus 3. Find the value of x for which this is equal to that. So this is just a matter of substitution. This is, we are having g h of x, you know, is equal to h g of x, like that. So what we are going to first do is, first of all, we are going to first Let's do this. Let's first deal with the things that are in the red brackets. So this means it's going to become g. So what is h of x? h of x is x minus 3. So g into x minus 3 is given by h into what is g of x? g of x is x squared minus 1. So this is x squared, I mean plus 1. So after doing that, now we deal with, you know, g of um, x, you know, g of x, you know, um, what this means that if this is g, and that is g, it means that in the place of x, what is in the brackets, what we have in the brackets in this case, is this entire term. And so it means that what is in the value in the brackets here is what is supposed to occupy there as far as the function g is concerned. So meaning that this one, it's going to become where uh, what is in the brackets is what occupies the value of x here. So meaning that as far as this is concerned, since this is what is in the brackets here, okay, so for the function g in the place of x squared, so in the place of x squared, there is x minus 3, so that is x minus 3 squared plus 1. That is going to be equal to, it's the same story or it's the same reasoning that we are going to apply here. You see, this is h, and you know, and uh, this is h right there, right? So what is in the brackets here is the value of x, and here what is in the brackets is the value of x. So it means that what is supposed to be, if this is x, what is in the bracket here is what should occupy the value of x here. So according to this here, what is in the value of, in the brackets here is what should substitute in for the value of x there. So it means for the value of x, it is x squared plus 1, that is what is in the brackets, then minus 3. So from there we continue and find the value of x. So this means it's going to become... Um, you know, we are going to expand this. This is x minus 3 into x minus 3. I want to use two identities. Plus 1 is equal to, that is x squared plus 1 minus 3. So that's going to become x squared. x times negative 3 is minus 3x. Minus 3x times x is minus 3x. Then minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. Then that is plus 1 is equal to, here we have x squared plus 1 minus 3. Now 1 minus 3, let's just simplify this from here. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So we continue. This is x squared. Um, this is going to become x squared. Uh, that is minus 9x. 9 plus 1 is 10. That is plus 10. It's going to give us x squared minus 2. So let's shift everything to one side of the equation. So this becomes x squared, the uh, minus 9x plus 10, then this x squared comes through, it becomes minus x squared uh, plus 2 is equal to 0. So that x squared and that x squared cancel out, you remain with negative minus 9x, that is plus 10 plus 2, that is plus 12 is equal to 0. Take it back. Negative 9x is equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 9. This goes with that. By 9 once, by 9 once. You remain with the value of x being equal to by 3 is 4. By 3 is 3, which is 4 over 3. So the value of x there is 4 over 3, and that is how we solve for that function. Moving on to the next number. Next, what do we have here? 
determine the range corresponding to the domain of this for a mapping of x to x squared plus 1. So they're asking us to represent the mapping in uh, Roman 1 on an arrow diagram. Okay, let's do this. Determine the range corresponding to, so this is the domain, so we have domain. The domain we have here is, you know, negative 3, negative 2, 0, 1, 3, and 4. That is the domain for the mapping. Okay, so determine the range. So how do we get the range? And what is the function? Of course, the, we, we are supposed to find the range corresponding to all these inputs. And the range is, you know, it is such that x is mapped onto x squared plus 1. So, um, le le let's do it this way. This is the domain. Um, domain. Let me try and, you know, draw something here. The domain here we have is negative 3, negative 2, 0, 1, 3, 4. That's the domain. And now each of this domain is actually more like a value of x, and it is supposed to be fed into this x squared plus 1. And when we feed it in there, we are supposed to be able to get our range. Okay, so we get started. So this is negative 3 squared plus 1. Negative 3 squared plus 1, what do we end up with here? 3 squared is 9 plus 1, which is 10. Then here is, you know, negative 2. Let me write it all in blue. Negative 2 squared plus 1, that is 2, negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1, which is 5, that is 0 squared plus 1, which is 1. Then we have 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. We have 3 squared plus 1, which is 10 also. And we have 4 squared plus 1, which is uh, 17, because 4 squared is 16 plus 1, which is 17. So that's how we get the, 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 the range we simply substitute that like that all right so <clears throat> so in other words as far as roman one is concerned i shall come here and say for roman one the range is given by as i shall simply come and list down these figures right here these ones here so the range is 10 comma 5 comma 1 comma 2 comma 10 comma 17 that's the range okay so roman 2 they're asking us to represent the mapping in roman 1 on an arrow diagram so to represent that mapping on an arrow diagram this is all we do so i'll come here and say roman 2 representing that mapping on an arrow diagram i will draw my domain i'll say this is a domain and then I will, um, you know, kind of like draw something here. Let me put my domain. The, the, the domain here is these figures here, which is negative 3, negative 2, 0, 1, 3, and 4, right? Yep. Yeah, right. 4. So this is my domain. Okay. And so I shall say x is mapped onto x squared plus 1. That's the formula that is going to get me to my range. Now, in my range, I have figures here. Um, I have, you know, um, of course, when I'm writing the figures of my range, I am not supposed to repeat a figure. So I'm seeing here this is 10. This is 5, this is 1, this is 2. 10 is already there, I won't write it again, then I will put 17. 
then the arrow diagram they're talking about is simply this that um, you remember what we did uh, previously here we did that um, when you feed in negative 3 you end up with 10 so it means that when you feed negative 3 in this expression you end up with 10 so that's the arrow like that then negative 2 gave us 5 so negative 2 gave us 5 when we fed in 0 we ended up with 1 so we, we fed in 0 we ended up with 1 that's the arrow diagram when we fed in 1 we ended up with 2 so 1 got us ending up with 2 of course these lines are supposed to be straight here I'm using freehand because of the graphing tablet I'm using so 3 10 so from 3 I end up with 10 now 3 10 is already there so I'll do this from 3 I end up with 10 I do it like that then 4 17 then from 4 to 17 and that's it we have answered Roman 2 which is asking us to represent the mapping in an arrow diagram so that's how we do the arrow diagram that is you know Roman 2 now let's do Roman 3 I mean part B of the question let me do it here let me wrap this off and do the by the way all this was more like just working so I'm so let me do part B of the question around here okay so part B of the question says that given the functions this and that find the values of x for which that is that okay they've given us functions the functions we have h of you know x is equal to x plus 2 okay then we have g function g of x which is x squared okay so we have h of x is x plus 2 g of x is x squared and we know that f of x is equal to negative x and we also know you know this is quite some information function of x is equal to negative x so that's the those are the three kinds of information we've been given so they want us to find the values of x for which g into h of x is equal to f of x like that so like before what we are going to simply do here is to just substitute the functions as we see them so here what is h of x what is that h of x is this so i shall simply come here and say g into in the place of h of x put x plus 2 because that is what you see up here so that becomes x plus 2 you know is equal to f of x now what is f of x in the place of f of x put negative x right so that is equal to negative x then continue all right now what we have here is g of x when you say g of x in the place of x there is x squared right what is in the brackets here is what is there for for the for g for the function g now in the function g here what we have in brackets is an expression so if what we have in the brackets is an expression it means that expression has occupied the place of x and so that expression is going to go there so if g of x is x squared so meaning g of x plus 2 is x plus 2 squared so meaning that g of x plus 2 means it's going to become in the place of g here in the place of x squared this is supposed to be x plus 2 squared is equal to negative x like that so after that then the rest is just you know opening brackets and simplifying so this is going to become x plus 2 into x plus 2 is equal to minus x so that gives us x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4 is equal to negative x so this becomes x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to negative x 
put negative x that side. When you do so, this becomes x squared plus 4x plus x plus 4 is equal to 0. So this becomes x squared plus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now we have a quadratic equation. Solving the quadratic equation means that we need two numbers. When those two numbers are added, they give us a sum of positive 5. And when we multiply them, they give us a product of 4 times 1, which is 4. So to find those two numbers, we have 1 times 4. 1 times 4 gives us, you know, 4. 1 plus 4 gives us 5. So the two numbers are 1 and 4. So we shall come here and say this is going to become x squared. Instead of putting this positive 5, we shall replace them with this. So it becomes plus x, which is 1x plus 4x. Then we shall come to here, say plus 4. The plus 4 is coming from here, is equal to 0. Then from here, we go ahead and factorize. When we factorize that, what do we end up with? Put x outside the brackets here into x squared divided by x is x. Positive x divided by x is plus 1, positive 1. Then that is plus 4. 4 is the common term outside here. 4x divided by 4 is x. Then positive 4 divided by positive 4 is positive 1 is equal to 0. Then you end up with x plus 4 into x plus 1, giving us 0. So from here, we can see that either x plus 4 is equal to 0 or x plus 1 is equal to 0. So x is either negative 4 or x is equal to negative 1. And that's it. We have been able to solve that. Moving on. So what do we have here? A function f of x is given by 3 over 1 minus x. So f of x is given by 3 over 1 minus x. Find the values of x for which f of x is equal to 4. So now the function where x is a variable is given by 3 over 1 over x squared. Okay, so what is what is it when, when f of x is equal to 4? Now take note that this is different from when we say find f when 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 you know find f of 4 when, when the value of x is 4. This is when the value of x is 4. When they say f of x is equal to 4, it means that this whole function is equal to 4. And so here, if f of x is equal to this, and they are saying that this same f of x is equal to 4, then it means that this is equal to 4. In other words, f of x is equal to 4 means that this whole function, 3 over 1 minus x squared, is equal to 4. And they want us to find the value of x for which that whole thing is equal to 4. So, this is divide that by 1, put this in brackets, cross multiply to make it a flat equation. 3 times 1 is, you know, 3, given by 4 times 1 minus x squared. So let's proceed with that. So from there, we can see that, you know, 3 is given by 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative x is minus 4x squared. This looks like a quadratic equation, so let's shift everything to one side of the equation. So this becomes 4x squared minus 4, okay? Uh, all right, it's minus 4 um, plus 3 is equal to 0. So here we end up with 4x squared, negative 4 plus 3 is going to give us negative 1. So it's negative 1 is equal to 0, okay? So it's not that much of a quadratic equation after all. So this becomes 4x squared is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4. This goes with that. What you're going to remain with is, um, you know, we have x squared here, giving us 1 over 4. So um, to get the value of x, we find the square root on both sides. And of course, when it's square root, it is either a positive or a negative number. So this goes with that. You remain with the value of x as either positive square root of 1 over 4 or a negative square root of 1 over 4. So from here, what we have, our value of x becomes either 1 over 2 or a negative 1 over 2. And that 
is the answer to that question right there. So let's move on to the next. Given that g of 3, find g of 3 given that g inverse of g is that. So they want us to find g of 3 if the inverse of that function is x plus 1 over x. Okay, so they've given us the inverse and they want us to find g of 3. So they've given us the inverse. So first of all, we're supposed to first work back, work from the inverse to get back to, to the original function where the inverse was gotten from. Then from there, we are able to find this. So if this is g to the power negative 1, or the inverse of the function g is given by that, let's term this as x. Now we are trying to find the inverse of this. Okay. So we shall say y. Let's call this one y. y is given by x plus 1 over x. So what we are going to do here is that we are going to, you know, make um, x the subject of the formula in this expression. We are trying to, 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 to find the, in, if this is the inverse, so to get this from g to the power negative 1, to get it to the function g of x, we need to work on this expression as though we are finding the inverse. We are going to do the reverse. The same procedure as we do when we are trying to do the inverse. So this is going to become, you know, this is um, yx is equal to x plus 1. Okay, so this goes that side becomes yx minus x is equal to 1. Since we are trying to find x as the subject of the formula, put x outside the brackets here into y minus 1 is equal to 1. So this becomes, you divide both sides by 1 minus 1 over y minus 1. So this goes with that. So you remain with your value of x as 1 over y minus 1. And now that you have that as x is equal to y, 1 over y minus 1, then from there, it means that now you have arrived at g of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1. As simple as that. After making x the subject of the formula, you flip the figures. The x becomes the y, the y becomes the x, and now you have g of x is equal to that, 1 over x minus 1. Now that you have that, then what about g of 3? Because the question requires us to find g of 3. So g of 3 means it's going to be 1 over 3 minus 1, which is 1 over 2. And that's the answer. As simple as that. Moving on to the next, we have here a number. Given that f of x is equal to 2x minus 5, function where x is the variable is given by 2x minus 5, find f of negative 2. So f of negative 2 is equal to 2 in the place of x, we are putting negative 2 minus 5. And this is going to be 2 times 2 is negative 4 minus 5. And this gives us negative 9. That's the answer. So part B. Part B, they're telling us to find the inverse of x. So first of all, f of x is given by 2x minus 5. So to find the inverse, that is to reverse it, let's call this y. y is equal to 2x minus 5. So what we do, we are going to make this x the subject of the formula. So how do we do that? This becomes y plus 5 is equal to 2x, divide both sides by 2. So that this goes with that, you remain with the value of x as y plus 5 over 2. Now that you have, you've, you've made x the subject of the formula, x is equal to y plus 5 over 2. Now, the, it means that now this is the expression for the inverse. So what we do here, we simply flip uh, the thing and say, therefore the inverse, that is f negative 1 of x, is going to be given uh, as where there is y, put x, x plus 5 over 2. And that's the inverse of you know, that's the inverse of the function. It means we have, you know, gotten part B correct. Uh, looking at the previous question, the previous question, they gave us the inverse here. 
they first gave us the inverse. That's the previous question. They gave us the inverse, and they we worked towards getting the f of x. Then from f of x, then we were able. Then they, I mean, we we worked backwards. Let's try it just here, just to show you. For example, this is if they've given us f inverse of x, and they've told us that it is x plus five over two, and they've told us to find f of one. So first of all, we need to first work from the inverse to the f, to the original form where it comes from. Then we put the one. This is how the previous question was structured. So again, we do the same uh, steps, right? It's, I just want to show it to you here, that we are moving from here, we are going to move and move back to there. How do we do it? This is how we do it, that if we have f negative 1, which is this, f negative 1 of x or the inverse of the function f, which is x plus 5 over 2, let's call this y. y is equal to x plus 5 over 2. So what we do is that we make x the subject of the formula here. How do we do that? So this becomes multiplied by 2 on both sides, becomes 2y is equal to, you know, x plus 5. So this means it's going to become, um, the value of x here is 2y minus 5. So we have x as 2y minus 5. So when x becomes 2y minus 5, so I shall simply come here and say, since we are moving from the inverse part, which is f to the power negative 1, when we do that, it means that what we are ending up with here is the function x being given to us as 2 where this y put x to x minus 5. So here we have, we have, we've moved back to this 2x minus 5, which so happens to be this right here, 2x minus 5. Of course, now this is not part of the question, but I just wanted to show you how it is, because it's exactly how the previous question had been asked. Anyway, let's move away from that. Finally, here we come. Given that f of x is 2x plus 4 and g of x is x plus 5, find this and evaluate that. So we have f of x given as 2x plus 4. We have g of x given as x plus 5. So f g of x is just substitution. Let's first substitute for g of x. Substituting for g of x means it's f. What is g of x? g of x is that. So f of x plus 5. After doing that, now we also know that where there is x here is what we put here. So if there is an x in the bracket of f, then it's what we put here. So here in the bracket of f, we have an expression x plus 5. So that x plus 5 is what we're going to put there. So it means this is going to become um, 2. So in the place of x, we are going to put x plus 5. Yeah. Plus 4. Like that. Then the rest is just simplifying. So this is going to become 2 times x, which is 2x. 2 times 5, which is that is plus 10. And that is plus 4. Then that is going to become 2x plus 10 plus 4 is 14. So this is what we mean by f g of x. That's the expression. But after getting f g of x, the question tells us hence find f g of 4. So it means that if it is after finding that f g <clears throat> where the value of x is 4 means it's going to become 2 and where there is x we put 4 plus 14. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus 14, and what's the answer? 22. And that's the answer. This brings us to the end of this session. Thanks for watching. Arnold Rangakuramia is my name, and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care.